So, uh, let us begin. Yeah, you can sit to the back. Okay, so Venerable Chanda is off to have a rest. And we can begin by uh, maybe just, um, well, uh, let's just um, quieten ourselves, quieten ourselves and quieten our minds. And um, um, if you want to, you can say how you're feeling in the chat. And if you don't want to, you can just close your eyes. And enter into the space that you're in, landing here, letting go of all the activities of the week, and bring your mind the present moment, allowing it to settle down, allowing it to let go of its burdens hopefully for a while, for just this hour. And be open and receptive to hearing the Dhamma. Noticing your body, noticing your mind, and allowing it to just settle down. Nothing to do for the next hour. Except and listen and understand the word of the Buddha. So when you're ready you can slowly open your eyes. Okay. So, um, let's begin. It's okay. So today we are on page 135 of our book, uh, The Buddha Teaching Social and Communal Harmony. And we have, uh, we're in this very rich topic because we have experience with it. It is not something theoretical. It is not some high dhamma that we don't understand. This is very real in all of our lives. It is about disputes and, and uh, disharmony. Well, it's the section on disputes. So I shall read, and you will probably recognize once again the very famous quarrel at Kosambi. 
So we have we have read this on many occasions, but it was obviously a a, a, a very uh, I don't know <laughs> must have been must have been quite something because it's like repeated so many times in so many places in the suttas and and to this day we remember the argument over the toilet bucket 2500 years later so ironically we still argue over toilets last week i was talking to one of the nuns in the in, in the monastery in in actually in sydney and she said you know one of the most difficult things is that a nun I've been living for ten with for ten years with. She just can't keep the toilet clean. <laughs> so it still bothers us. <laughs> um, okay, so I shall read. Now, on that occasion, the monks at Kosambi had taken to arguing and quarreling and had fallen into dispute, stabbing each other with piercing with verbal daggers. Then a certain monk went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he stood at one side and said, Bhante, the monks here at Kosambi have taken to arguing and quarreling and have fallen into a dispute, stabbing each other with verbal daggers. It would be good, Bhante, if the Blessed One would go to those monks out of compassion. The Blessed One consented in silence. Then the Blessed One went to those monks and said to them, Enough monks, let there be no arguing and quarreling and dispute. When this was said, a certain monk said to the Blessed One, Wait, Bhante, let the Blessed One, the Lord of the Dhamma, live at ease, devoted to a pleasant abiding here and now. We are the ones who are responsible for this dispute. For a second time, for a third time, the Blessed One said, Enough monks, let there be no arguing and quarreling and dispute. For a third time, that monk said to the Blessed One, Wait, Bhante, let the Blessed One, the Lord of the Dhamma, live at ease, devoted to a pleasant abiding here and now. We are the ones who will be responsible for this dispute. In short, they said, get lost. I said, we'll sort it out. You go off and meditate, get lost. <laughs> so uh, this is quite funny. This is what makes the Dhamma alive, you know. It's like, it's not just the high, it's not just, you know, and they all lived happily ever after. No, this, even in the time of the Buddha, they were quarreling and arguing. So what about the rest of us? Then, when it was morning, the Blessed One, dressed and taking his bowl and out robe, entered Kosam before arms. When he had wandered for arms in Kosambi and had turned from his arms round, after his meal, set his resting place in order, took his bowl and out robe, and while still standing, uttered these stanzas. So the Buddha got lost. <laughs> he went off. <laughs> he took his bowl and robes. He left the monks at Kosambi and he took off. But anyway, what comes up is some of the most beautiful verses that are recorded in the Dhammapada. You've probably heard many of them, but it seems that it all came out of the quarrel at Kosambi. So I shall read them out. When many voices shout at once, none considers himself a fool. 
Though the Sangha is being split, none thinks himself to be at fault. Read that again. When many voices shout at once, none considers himself a fool. Though the, though the Sangha is being split, none thinks himself to be at fault. They have forgotten thoughtful speech, talking obsessed by words alone. Uncurbed their mouths, they bawl at will. None knows what leads him to so act. Read that again. They have forgotten thoughtful speech, talking obsessed by words alone. Uncurb their mouths, they bawl at will. None knows what leads him to so act. I read it again because it's so real. When we're caught up with words, we forget why we're speaking. What is making us say these things? We're so, so, you know, we're so, um, we have forgotten what makes us say what we want to say. The Buddha captures it so well. None knows what leads him to so act. And then this is another, all these beautiful Dhammapada verses. He abused me. He struck me. He defeated me. He robbed me. In those who harbor thoughts like these, enmity will never be allayed. I'll read again. He abused me, he struck me, he defeated me, he robbed me. In those who harbor thoughts like these, enmity will never be laid. This is what we do, isn't it? This is so real. What, how dare they have said to me? What did they say? Why did they do that? That's not fair. They hurt me. This is what we're taught to remember in the world. This is what the, this is what, um, uh, you know, we can, what, what, what we fight for. We fight for justice. We fight for um, having been abused. We fight for uh, having been, you know, we, we fight back. That's what we do. For in this world, enmity is never allayed by enmity. I will change the translation. By love alone it ceases. This is a fixed and ages ageless law. For in this world, enmity is never allayed by enmity. By love alone it ceases. This is a fixed and ageless law. Those others do not recognize that here we should restrain ourselves, but those wise ones who realize this at once end all their enmity. Mm. Breakers of bones and murderers, those who steal cattle, horses, wealth, those who pillage the entire realm, whenever these can, when even these can act together, why can you not do so too? <laughs> That's funny. If one can find a worthy friend, a virtuous, steadfast companion, then overcome all threats of danger and walk with him content and mindful. But if one finds no worthy friend, no virtuous, steadfast companion, 
then as a king leaves his conquered realm, walk like a tusker in the woods alone. I'll read those two verses again. They are just, again, beautiful verses. If one can find a worthy friend, a virtuous, steadfast companion, then overcome all threats of danger and walk with him content and mindful. But if one finds no worthy friend, no virtuous, steadfast companion, then as a king leaves his conquered realm, walk like a tusker in the woods alone. Better it is to walk alone. There is no companionship with fools. Walk alone and do no evil at ease like a tusker in the woods. So We have a lot to discuss. Right. Just trying to change the view so that I can see more. Okay. okay. So. Shall we take a few verses at a time? And um, start with a few verses and then we can discuss them because there are many verses, very rich. So we'll start at the beginning. When many voices shout at once, none considers himself a fool. Though the Sangha is being split, none thinks himself to be at fault. They have forgotten thoughtful speech, talking obsessed by words alone. Uncurb their mouths, they bawl at will. None knows what leads him to so act. So this is what happens to us when we get into get into the heat of things we have we become passionate and we sort of it gives us sort of power and energy to get angry and make you know grand statements and uh, feel very feel very powerful but Quite often those words are not coming from kindness, they're coming from a sense of wanting to establish our sense of self, wanting to say, this is who I am and this is what I believe in. But uh, it's not really coming from often uh, 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 wanting, wishing the other person well. We're not really thinking, well, do they really need to hear this? Are they in a are they mood to know what what I believe? You know, are they um, are they do, uh, uh, do what I say make a difference to to this person's state of mind? Helping them. Um, remember again the five uh, things to consider before we speak. You know, is it the right time? Is it the right uh, is it beneficial? Is it uh, coming from kindness? Is it gentle speech? Is it said with the heart of loving kindness? So we forget all these things in the heat of the moment and we are so driven to make our point and to um, exert ourselves. So yeah, does anybody have anything to say to this? I'm sure we do this all the time. <laughs> I 
do you have some typing box or should I keep going? Yeah, please go ahead, Melanie. Melanie, can you unmute, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, as I was reading this verse, I was more thinking about uh, sometimes when you're in a group, um, it's not that you lose your perspective, but sometimes you can feel the the energy of the group or the intention of the group. And if it's not, if the group mm -hmm. is not, um, has kind of bad intention or violent, or sometimes you can, um, I don't know, well, it can happen that you you lose your, well, you lose something, but you, you think as a group and not as an individual and you can, do things that are not wholesome and not good. And um, for instance, when right. when you have protesters in the streets, sometimes people are, are okay, but mm -hmm. if somebody begins to to I don't know to to break a, a shop windows and maybe somebody is going to break also the shop windows and steal things from the shop, it can happen. And people are not thieves in in themselves, but yeah. it happens that they they are drawn by the the energy of the group. That's I was thinking more about that, also about what you said, venerable. But mm -hmm. this verse, I was thinking about that and um, how easy it is sometimes to be not to see what's good for yourself because you're surrounded by people that are are or doing bad mm. things. Right. Mm. And I was yeah. wondering how to That's... how to prevent or how to uh, not to be in this kind of situation. Maybe it starts with associating with good friends, but I don't know if you have any mm. advice mm. or. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was that in myself as well, getting, getting, uh, we are just so such social beings, we can't help but start to give like a tribe, you know, and when the tribe starts to behave in a particular way, we just, something in us just says, we've got to do the same thing. And with this teaching, it's about going against that, going against that tendency that, uh, of being tribal. So for me, I just have to be completely mindful. What am I doing at all time? You know, especially when that passion comes up, what am I doing? Am I just feeding it? So the more one is mindful and the more one is aware of oneself, the more less likely you are to get sucked in at that time. So I guess it's as your mind is defined and your mind becomes um, more subtle you notice it you notice it happening and you go i will turn the other way i don't know if that helps yeah, yeah. i was at the was in london during the uh, extinction rebellion and there were drums playing and flags flying and you know chanting and i could just see myself wanting to join in the join in the 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 that's what it does, you know, all this drumming and all the rest of it. But because I was a nun, obviously, I couldn't jump around well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess the 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 mind that to know what is happening and to pull yourself away from that. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. That's a very good so, advice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So free for say from Manri, it's ha it's called herd mentality, yeah, or hive mentality. Have the same question as Melanie. And John says, yet it, yes, it leads to diffusion of responsibility. And Linda says, I was in a similar situation. I was supporting a group of strikers, and I felt angry when strikers were being recorded by management. 
yeah yeah does anybody else has have any advice for not being caught up in herd mentality if anybody i'm sure yeah. i'm sure everyone has <laughs> been the situation Okay. okay, we will move on, we will move on. But um, yeah, it is good to, it is good to, oh, Stefano, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Stefano, may I ask you to unmute? Hello? Can yeah. you hear me? Hello, hello? Yes. Oh, hello. Now I wanted to say thank you. Hello. Uh, I think you're absolutely right on that one, and uh, we tend to lose our mindfulness. And and one thing, a uh, nice thing about getting older, although I don't have much wisdom to share, <laughs> really. But you, you know, with time, when I was young, I thought everything was black and white. By the age of twenty, I thought I had everything mm. figured out, and actually, it's not like that. And uh, <laughs> even uh, anything. Mm, uh, uh, any, any code we might fight for the most beautiful one that we, we have to be very careful because the passion and excitement blinds us so yeah so I had like my ego has crashed many times mm. just thinking about, <laughs> about, about these I think oh yeah of course I'm a, and in Buddhism as well oh, I'm a Theravada Buddhist oh we, well, of course yeah, it's totally clear but it's not <laughs> so yeah, so just think about complexity of things, so I think it can help a little bit, as well as what, what all you said is really Just growing older. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll just read the box before the show. Uh, I think practice time and determine not to ahead of time so you may be more likely to catch yourself you're in when you're in this situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Shell, go ahead. Shell, may I ask it on mute, please? Hi. Um, yeah, I was just reflecting on that because I was thinking about the kind of practicalities um, and I've spent a lot of the last three years in frontline activism and some of it uh, at protest camps and things where there is violence and I've witnessed uh, people, other protesters that I've been with being violent. Um, and I myself have like been drawn to particularly using language that I wasn't proud of towards security services and police. And so I withdrew myself from it. But I was just reflecting on <clears throat> how it is that in the herd and hive mentality, how I can cope with that now and I realized quite early on actually I noticed when I was around people that I trusted or in the Dharmic sense like Kalamitra's spiritual friends I knew that no matter what was going on around me something could be happening right next to me I could just look at them and they would bring me peace and I didn't necessarily know that they were doing that it was just that I knew that I had someone there that I could trust and almost look up to in a way um, often for me it was older women that had a lot more experience in activism but it was just making sure and now when I go to protests mm -hmm. and things I make sure I've got that grounded atmosphere around me because I do notice it as soon as I see the police I just notice my heart rate go up and I just want to be shouting at them why are you doing this but um yeah it's really calming so I think it I did into having calamitras and spiritual friendships and the importance of that to make sure that we use right speech and have wholesome thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that because you have real life experience of being in of being in the heart of things. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. 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 What a lovely reflection. Thanks for sharing. 
So we will go on to the next few verses. He abused me. He struck me. He defeated me. He robbed me. In those who harbor thoughts like this, like these, enmity will never be allayed. For in this world, enmity is never laid by enmity. It, by love alone, it sees. This is a fixed and ageless law. So this is one of the most beautiful verses in the Mahabharata, and one of the most. Um, for me, since I was a child, you know, you always think if someone has hurt me, the natural tendency is want to hurt them back. You know, if I have been hit, hit back. And somehow you're even taught that to get your, to, you know, to, to, to seek justice, which is true to somebody, which is true to seek justice, to, um, um, yeah, somehow, when I have been hit, something deep inside wants to hit back. But this is what Buddha says, this is what causes our suffering. For those who harbor thoughts like these, enmity will never be allayed. So just holding on to these thoughts, you will never be free. For in this world, Enmity word, well, hatred is not ceased by hatred in this world. I've memorized this sutta so many times since I was little. By love alone it sees. This is a fixed and ageless law. One of my most inspiring human beings on this earth is the Dalai Lama. Because um, despite his people, he himself and his people being so wronged, to be able to turn around and forgive makes him such a beautiful person, such a, um, I mean, a beacon of light and inspiration to the entire planet because he follows this law. It is by love alone it sees. This is a fixed and ageless law. So if we in our heart can remember that no amount of vengeance, no amount of, of uh, getting our own back is ever going to resolve the situation. It is by totally, utterly forgiving, by totally, utterly letting go of any grudges that, that you find peace in your own heart. Our retreat tomorrow is on the wisdom of forgiveness. It's a whole day of exploring this topic. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So would anybody like to say anything I, or uh, comment in the chat box? to how they have practiced this or how they have uh, worked with them, um, feeling robbed and abused and defeated. Yeah, oh yes, Bhante Sujata is translated. For never is hatred settled by hate. It is only settled by love. This is an eternal truth. Thank you for that translation. For never is ha hatred settled by hate. It is only settled by love. This is an eternal truth. Thank you. So does anybody have anything to say? anything to comment.
sometimes we can't forgive because we feel that the other person hasn't acknowledged their wrong. And even though we know we should forgive, we can't because, you know, something is unsaid. The person who has, well, in our minds, clearly done wrong won't even acknowledge it. This is when I was, we were talking about yesterday when it was Chanda and I, myself, you know, in Australia, um, the stolen generation, if you heard of them, was the stolen generation was when um, children were taken away from uh, from Aboriginalities and, and re-educated, re i.e. made to be white. But uh, anyway, they were taken away from that, taken away from their mothers, and they're called the stolen generation. And the the government never ever acknowledged it. The never government ever never. Um, there was never an apology until I think it was Kevin Rudd in in two thousand and eight. I just googled that it was in two thousand and eight. Finally said sorry. So this was. Uh, a momentous day in ever in Australian history when the Prime Minister of the country apologized for this stolen generation. And somehow there's a relief, but until then, you know, there's just there's just unsaid pain, unacknowledged pain. And uh, yeah, it's very difficult to move on. So Right. Forgiveness is about us, not about them. That's it. However wronged we have been, in the end, we are the ones who hurt. We are the ones who hurt. So for our own benefit and purely out of selfish motives, we try everything in the book to learn to forgive. So, would anybody like to to uh, share anything? Read the next verse in verse in the next one. Those others do not recognize that here we should restrain ourselves. But those wise ones who realize this at once end all their enmity. It is that here we should restrain ourselves. And those wise ones who realize this at once end all their enmity. Yeah. It's for ourselves that we forgive, not for other people. Do um, do does anybody want to share what the what they find are obstacles to forgiveness or obstacles to um, being able to let go of any wrongs and hurts? I know for myself, one of them is my ego. <laughs> we like to think that, you know, it gives us a sense of somehow we, f we feel we exist when we're upset. We like to, you know, it somehow gives us an identity, the one who has been wronged, the one who has been hurt. It actually secretly, it feels, feeds our, not so secretly anyway, it feeds our, uh, uh, our victimhood. I have a, a friend who, anyway, it's part of his Irish psyche <laughs> to be the victim. They have been wronged by the British for 900 years. They have, they have been, you know, they are the ones that were colonized and everything that the British did around the world. They tried it on the Irish first. And so they, we are the, we are the, we are the victims 
And uh, this is an actual national, it seems to be a national identity. And so um, in our own little ways, our egos, we are the, we are the victims and we, we, we feel that it feels like we exist because we are the victims. Then this says, I think I would like people to grovel and I am wrong. <laughs> but forgiveness is peace. We don't forget the wrongs. So, yeah. I heard the Dalai Lama once say that uh, it's not as though you forget the wrong, remember them because you don't want to get hurt again. But we still... So it's not as though you 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 forget it because you don't want to get hurt over and over again, but it's that holding on to the grudge and keeping it keeping it alive that that's what makes us. Manori, there is one more test. Oh, text from Kim that I missed. Thank you very much. It's hard when you keep, when, when they keep doing the same thing, right? I find it hard to forgive and still protect myself. Yeah. They keep doing the same things. Yeah. Yeah. Just to protect yourself, you have to maybe sometimes uh, put yourself in a different situation if you find it. Diff I mean, it's sometimes difficult because it could be your own family member. So, yeah, I guess some, yeah, if it's at all. Put yourself in a, a, a better situation where you're not confronted by that that difficulty over and over again. Mm. Does, does anybody have any uh, answers for me or? Yeah, Melanie, may I ask you to unmute yeah, again? Um, it, it's not an answer, but uh, I noticed when it happens to me and I'm quite angry or I feel wronged. Um, uh, how do you say that? It's, it's very... Uh, it's not uh, my anger, it's not disappearing at once, but I first, I, I noticed that maybe I want to, to say bad words or to, to do something to hurt the other person. And I try to re refrain from that. And it's the first step. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm doing good. I'm not, I'm not uh, doing too too many bad things and then after a while i i try to calm down and to maybe to go for a walk or something and it's helping me not to try to to make the anger or the the bad feelings disappear at once but i i find that if i take my take time to well i take time to 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 forgive but I, I allow myself to, to take time to forgive because at first when it happened to me, I said, oh no, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a bad person. I cannot forgive immediately, but it, it didn't help at all. So now I, I yes, I take time and I try mm -hmm. to, to, how to say that, mm -hmm. to be kind to myself right. and to, to notice that I need more time to, to heal and to, maybe to talk again to this person and and that's good enough for me <laughs> and it helps me a lot to to hear to them to them I talk and to share also 
right 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 uh, that's true we were uh, we were saying yesterday Chad and myself that we force ourselves to forgive but actually it takes a long time so it's a slow process and and um, to accept that we have not been able to forgive is important and know that it is a process and it takes time so allowing that process to uh, rather than rather than forcing ourselves to allowing that process to happen in its own 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 way rather than dictating the process so yeah thank you melanie so Stefano says, when we meditate, we have the opportunity to train the mind to see unconscious feelings and thoughts coming to visit over and over and see them as they are, i.e. temporary and lacking a permanent self. That is so true. After a while, we just kind of go like, I, I've heard this one before. <laughs> and then we, you know, yeah we get sick of them <laughs> we bore ourselves eventually and thank god for the dhamma we learned that there actually is no permanence the whole thing is entirely our own drama we've made up the story and we are one of the actors enjoying the play very much and all it is is a play in our heads yeah so leonie said perhaps it is possible to forgive but still speak up against the injustice against us others i worry if these words by the buddha are not, if they are not understood deeply they could lead to passivity passivity and a false restraint hello hello oh you turned up <laughs> Passivity, passivity and a false restraint that is really just another way of asserting self. This time the idea, I am a forgiving, peaceful person. That is so true. We're talking about he. We're talking about forgiveness. And you can't see ourselves because I don't know how to move this. <laughs> so... So, um, yeah, that is very true. The ego is a key little beast and um, finds all kinds of ways to, 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 um, to, to carry on in some kind of, you know, judgmental and, you know, secretly self-sustaining ways. So yeah, the Venerable Haswanya Abbot in Damasar always says, right speech is not no speech. So right speech doesn't mean saying nothing. It means um, that's, yeah, it means speaking at that time in the right way. So yeah, it's a tricky business. We have to, uh, we have to be brutally honest with ourselves and see what trip am I getting in this time? What am, am I just kind of uh, being passive and uh, avoiding things, finding a new, a new way of being comfortable in sansara? So, good point. It takes guts to speak up. It takes speaking in the right way out of the right mindset it's hard yeah yeah the dhamma is tricky the, the 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 mind is tricky so it's not that there's one way and another you have to keep being honest and keep, uh, keep practicing So, shall we move on if anyone has 
you can come to the retreat to learn much more about this subject. So we'll move on if any nobody has anything to add. Breakers of bones and murderers, those who steal cattle, horses, wealth, those who pitch the entire realm. When even these can act together, why can you not do so too? So that's a funny one. Even if even if thieves can get together and rob a house, one can't even have a dispute over a toilet bucket. <laughs> The Buddha has a sense of humor. This is one of those. So, uh, so I will, I will, I will. If one can find a worthy friend, a virtuous, steadfast companion, that overcome all threats of danger, and walk with him content and full. But if one finds no worthy friend, no virtuous, steadfast companion, then as a king leaves his conquered realm, walk like Tusker in the woods alone. Better it is to walk alone. There is no companionship with fools. Walk alone and do no evil at ease like a tucker in the woods. So that is another most beautiful and powerful Dhammada verse. We in the world there are many, many worthy and unworthy friends, those who, well, really, um, most people in the world, they, they, well, they are worthy people, so they talk about worldly things, and we are drawn by that. We are drawn to talks of talking about, you know, shopping, I don't know what people talk about, um, material things in the world. And uh, it's hard to avoid. It's hard to avoid. Finding a worthy companion is hard to find. Unless you join a monastery and even then. <laughs> so the Buddha says, if you cannot find a worthy friend, better to walk alone. There is no companionship with fools. Walk alone and do no evil. At ease like a tusker in the woods. So how difficult is this? Because all the world, all our family and friends, or most people are, are, uh, are uh, walking in one direction. They're walking in the direction of set fires or of proliferation of mindless chatter or um, gossip. How difficult it is to to turn away from that. I find it very difficult. One has to be very mindful to um, not get caught up in what is just normal for the rest of the world. What would they say is better to walk alone? Just as a king leaves his conquered realm, that's how difficult it is, you know. You have everything, you're, you're so easy to, to, you feel at, you know, accepted when you speak in a certain way on certain topics, agree with people. You are, but you turn away like a king leaving his conquered realm. That's how much we have to leave behind. So, does anybody have something to say? The 
the message from Dev regarding the previous little section. Thank you for the suit and the discussion. When I saw the anger from the strikers and when they were being recorded right in front of the microphone video equipment, I was aware of my speech. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Very, thank you so much. Sometimes we make mistakes as well, you know. We say things and go, oh, well, done. <laughs> That wasn't that wasn't very good. But we then of ourselves as well because we certainly are not enlightened and we are certainly going to mistake. So sometimes it's good to experiment. I said this, but yeah, I wasn't good. And then we try a different way the next time. So I'm sure many people have a lot of experience of better it is to walk alone. Is anybody else? Anything to say? Yeah. It's very difficult to it's very difficult to work on. And it's very difficult to work out who is a worthy friend because um we don't recognize wholesome and what is unwholesome. What we think in the world is mostly all right, actually. Is not very good for us. A lot of mindless chatter. I mean, that most people do really. <laughs> yeah. And the time that did you want any in the background? I did listening. Okay, I'll say one thing. Yeah. Can I hear? You might have to come a little closer, maybe, or speak up. I can't hear you. I know. Well, um, sometimes it happens all the time. The, the more you practice, the more dolphins drop away because you don't engage so much. You don't have to reject them, but you don't engage so much. Mm. And what I found was that I was just hanging around, not practitioners, much that all my friends became other practitioners. Mm. And over time, you just attract other people who are interested in similar things. Mm. But sometimes also, I mean, like one of the reasons for creating community is to say to people, and this is basically what we try to practice mm. kind speech, and we try to overcome resentment, we try to practice forgiveness, loving kindness. And again, that attracts people and support other people in that. So I think it's not always about leaving people, but sometimes it's just creating friendships with other people or creating spaces where other friendships can develop. Mm. And really um yeah, placing those things the spiritual values in the centre of your life. Mm. So it changes on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Like attracts like birds of a feather fly to flock together. <laughs> you you tend to gravitate towards people who are you know, who ha who are like minded. So hopefully they become the majority of your friends. Yeah, did Gunther have something to say? Please go ahead. No, that was a no. 
okay. So um, we have uh, five, ten minutes to go. So five minutes really. So perhaps rather than quickly the another sutta. I'm sorry, Venerable Sanda. Maybe we to to be the we were hoping to do another one, but there's only only five minutes left. So um, perhaps if nobody has any other comments, we can sit quietly for five minutes and absorb everything that we did. And is the setup good? Okay, we will sit quietly. Okay, instead, I will read you a poem that from Tina Han that I have got tomorrow very powerful, very beautiful. It's, it's like, as you know, tomorrow is on, on forgiveness. And this uh, poem was uh, a friend of mine, actually. Well, someone I know very well is in prison and a friend of mine sent this to him. Needless to say, he was he is in prison for something that he did. So, and when you're in prison for something that you did, you spend your time remembering that one thing that you did, and not the many many other things that you have done right. So, in the last five minutes, I just read out this poem. Blessed ones who in this world, grant to us compassion. In this and countless lives before, from beginningless times, our mistakes have caused much suffering to ourselves and others. We have done wrong, ingratitude to wrong, and given our consent to acts of killing, stealing, deceiving, sexual misconduct, and other harmful actions and unwholesome deeds. Whether our faults are known to others or whether they, they have brought to us, brought us to the realms of hell, hungry ghosts and animals, causing us to be born in places filled with pain and suffering. We have not had the chance to realize our full potential. Today we are determined with one point of concentration to repent the obstacles of our past unwholesome actions. Blessed one, in our blessed ones, be our witness and look upon us with compassion. We surrender before you and make this aspiration. If at all in this very life or countless lives before, we have given even a handful of food or simple garments. If we have ever spoken kindly, even in only a few words, if we ever looked with eyes of compassion, if only for a moment, if we have ever comforted or consoled, even if only once or twice. If we have ever listened to wonderful teachings, even if only to one talk. 
If we have ever offered a meal to monks or nuns, even if only once, if we have ever saved a life, even if only that of an ant or a worm, if we have ever recited a sutra, even if only one or two lines, if we have ever been a monk or a nun, even if only for one life, if we have ever supported others on the path of practice, even if only two or three people. All of this merit has slowly formed wholesome seeds within us. Today, we get together like a fragrant flower garland and with great respect, we offer it all awaken. Our contribution to the fruit of the highest path open our hearts wide to the perfect highest awakening. We are resolved to take great understanding. We will realize compassion and embody great love. We will practice diligently transforming our suffering and suffering of all other beings. Please transfer the merits of body, speech and mind to the happiness of people and all other beings. Apart from the thirst for great understanding and the embodiment of love, there is no desire within us. All Buddhas in the times and the ten directions have offered their merit as we are doing. Repenting all our faults, we joyfully contribute to the immeasurable ocean of merit and the towering peaks of the highest understanding. The Buddhas are the light which show us the way. In this solemn moment, with all my life force, I come back to myself and bow deeply with respect. is a poem from the Tinahan tradition, reminding us to recollect our own goodness. So we will end there and Manuri, yeah, if you have uh, Manuri will finish today's the discussion with the Panetta. Yeah, so as you know, today's discussion and all the regular dis programs um, by Anukampa all offered on a donation basis in the spirit of generosity. Uh, they are free, but if you are capable, if you have an ability, you can uh, give a donation. Um, and all these all the donations that you contribute are very gratefully received and they will help to support the Vihara in Oxford and also Anukampa project, Bikuni project activities in the future and setting up England's first monastery where women can train towards full Bikuni ordination. Um, so there's going to be uh, not much of Put Dana needed. There's only one week more for the venerables to uh, uh, leave for their vast. And uh, but if you are a volunteer, if you mm. are still thinking of uh, joining any voluntary group, please email team at anukampaproject.org and see how you can um, uh, 
uh, you know, work with all the volunteers we have, and we are uh, organizing in a much more structured way now, uh, which is quite exciting times for Anukampa Bikuni project these days. Um, and um, mm -hmm. uh, there, there will be regular um, uh, regular events, and there's going to be some uh, Sunday Sunday events where um, uh, some Bikun, Bikunis and probably because um, uh, it's all uh, planned and not yet um, uh, given out, but uh, you will know those details in the next um, newsletter. So keep an eye on the next news newsletter and the events page as well. Um, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I never chance this coming. Well, I can't see myself, I can't, I but I guess I'm there in the picture. We can't see anything, the chat box is in front of the body. Close the chat, that's good. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Okay, so we Yeah. Everyone can do it. Goodbye. Ah. Ah.